Virtualization now appears to be no longer sufficient. Instead, telcos need to become cloud native. Marcus, thanks for joining us again on Telecom TV. What exactly do we mean by the term cloud native? Yeah, that's a question I got quite often. Uh, since I'm working in the Etsy NFV space and we look into the cloud native there as well, we have all that discussions. For me, there are several aspects which make something cloud native. I think some one or two years ago, talking at this event here, I was comparing cloud native with ants like small ants going around doing their work compared to an elephant being the monolithic VNF. So that's sort of one, one aspect. The other aspect is sort of APIs and that you call one component to the other to build up out of components, you build up functionality, services, and so on. So that goes towards like telcos being more a digital service provider than just network functions being part of the platform. And sort of the third thing is probably sort of the whole thing around orchestration of these different components, which need to be done a bit different than we do it today or how it has been done traditionally in telco. So together that creates cloud native environments, um, but what's the current status? Where are we in telecoms today? So it has started to go on. Uh, there is standards activities going on. There's a lot of discussion in open source, using containers, uh, using Kubernetes, things like that, pass type of things. We see in the industry a set of first implementations of five, specifically 5G functions, which are implemented newly. They are implemented in a cloud native way. So we see that, and we see a lot of startups sort of see that as a differentiator to bring their VNF in a more cloud native way to the market. So it sort of started to show up in the marketplace, but it's not like, it's in its infancy, I would say. The, this evolution of network functions is, is interesting because very recently we're starting to hear more of the, the term CNFs or cloud native network functions, um, as opposed to pure VNFs. What, what, what exactly does that, that, does that mean? Is there a technical basis to that or, or is this more of a, of a mindset thing? I think it's more of a mindset. It's, uh, I mean, we used to call it a VNF, a virtual network function. And then we talked about the virtual network function implemented the cloud native way. So sort of giving this new animal a new name, I think makes a lot of sense because it's, it's really m much more different than we thought it is at the beginning. So I'm, I'm going back to your analogy of the ants here now. Um, so in a way, this is introducing microservices then and containers, this is this all segmenting down into small, what, more, more, more functions, more applications or instances? It's for sure instances. Uh, I think it's also different applications. I think the, I mean, one of the goals of all that cloud native and digitalization is that we want to have a very customized experience for our customers. So you need to have adding and deleting functionality for a particular customer and you need that flexibility. And you want to have that in a very small, a very fine granular way with all the challenges coming around with from the management and operation of things like that. Right, as you said, the management of it and, and, and orchestrating in, in, in this new domain. Uh, does this all then fit into the, the telco cloud? Uh, we talked about the telco cloud on and off for years now, but, but what, what makes the telco cloud unique? Telco cloud is unique because it has really different workloads. If you think of data plane traffic running through the telco cloud, that's massive IO oriented load. Today, many of the sort of cloud native features and, and uh, open source projects and so on have not really dealt with the IO intense workloads uh, so far. Their first movements into that direction. I, but that's like with the VNFs. I mean, when we started NFV, nobody was thinking we run data plane traffic through a virtual uh, instance. But these days, it's not a big deal anymore. So I think the evolution of the technology was helped to solve that. This is the you know, SDN NFV World Congress. Is there still a role for NFV within new cloud native architectures? Yes, sure, it's still the basis of, of all the cloud native things as well. I mean, the telco cloud or the NFV infrastructure is the baseline for everything, we've, we believe, specifically everything which is more centralized. And there, it's basically an extension of that functionality with more cloud native ways of doing things. 
And we believe that some functionality, specifically some of the legacy functions, will stay in a more virtual function than a, a cloud native function. So it's, it will be a mix for quite some time. So the, the platform just basically needs to support both. Final question for you, is, is this transformational effort and the move and the evolution towards cloud native, is this helping CSPs and telcos become more open in their, their philosophy, their outlook, the, the, the way they organize internally, the culture, because we're seeing the, the, this shift and hearing the need to, to reskill, think very carefully ab about how they evolve towards the future. Yeah, we're going to be more open. We have to be more open. And the, the technology allows also to be more open. So we, we allow people to run their applications on our infrastructure using some of the 5G components over an API, things like that. That's a certain degree of openness. I mean, so, so far you got the phone and the, and the same, that's it. Huh? So I think we're going to be much more open. On the skill side, that's still a challenge. We are very uh, physical oriented, also from the skill set. So the whole software engineering departments need to skill up and, and, and get ready for these things. So this is ongoing. But it's, I mean, at Swisscom we had a bit of a, a, a head start on that since we always did IT for quite some time. Well, Marcus, as always, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you very much.